In this module we simply continue what we discussed earlier regarding electric potential energies but now focused on electric potential. Here we have batteries and they are differentiated by the amount of voltage it can give. Electric potential denoted by V is related to electric potential energy as shown by equation 22. Electric potential is what we commonly call voltage and you can see them in batteries. The unit of for an electric potential is given as voltages and 1 volt is equal to 1 joule per coulomb. It is a scalar quantity. Here we have the charged parallel plates where a positive test charge moves across. We recall the work done in moving the test charge and it is given by equation 2 which is the negative of the change in electric potential energy. If we divide both sides by the test charge we get an expression that is identical to the formulation for the electric potential V. So we get the relationship between work done in pushing the test charge from A to B equal to the negative change of the electric potential V. From equation 4 we see that the electric potential at points A and B are given as VA and VB. We recall the expression of work as a function of the electric field E and we see here in equation 5. If we divide both sides of the work expression in equation 5 by the test charge, we write another expression for the electric potential which is a function of the electrical field E and the distance Y as shown in equation 7. So here we can have an expression for the electrical potential at points A and B as shown here. The general expression for the electric potential is written as a function of electric field and the distance y as shown in equation 8. If we manipulate the function of electrical potential in equation 8 we will arrive at the function of electrical potential in equation 1. So we recall the equation for the electrical potential energy as shown in equation 9. Substituting this to equation 8 we see that it ends in equation 1 which is the function for the electrical potential energy. For this case let us determine if the change in electrical potential energy is increasing or decreasing. Recall the expression of change of electric potential which is written in equation 4. When it draws closer to the reference plate B its distance Y is reduced such that YB is less than Y which in turn gives us an electric potential B less than electric potential A. So the change in electric potential as the charge moves closer to the reference plate is negative which suggests that it is decreasing in change in electrical potential. Using the change in electric potential let us determine the work done in moving the charge will be positive or negative. Recall the expression for the work as a function of the change in electric potential as shown in equation 4. Since the change in electric potential is negative since it is decreasing then the work done will be positive. Here we investigate the electric potential if the charge moves from the negative plate to the positive plate. Recall the expression of change of electric potential which is equation 4. When it draws farther from the reference plate B its distance Y is increased such that YB is greater than Y which in turn gives us the electric potential at B is greater than at A. So the change in electric potential as the charge moves closer to the reference plate gives us an increasing change in electrical potential. Using again the change in electric potential let us determine the work done if it is positive or negative. Recall the expression for work with change in electric potential which is equation 4. From previous calculations we know that the change in electric potential is positive so the work done is negative.
Here we use a negative test charge and it is moving from the positive plate to the negative plate. Recall the expression of change of electric potential which is equation 4. When it draws closer to the reference plate B its distance Y decreases such that Y B less than Y and since it is a negative charge it is becoming less negative electric potential when the distance is shorter than the, the electric potential at B is greater than at A. So the change in electric potential as the charge moves closer to the reference plate B is an increasing change in electrical potential. Using the change in electric potential let us determine the work done if it is positive or negative. Recall the expression for work with change in electric potential using equation 4. We see that the electric potential is positive as shown earlier so the work done is negative. For this case the negative test charge moves toward the positive plate A. Recall the expression for the change in electric potential which is equation 4. When it draws farther from the reference plate B its distance Y increases such that YB is greater than Y and since it is a negative charge it is becoming more negative as it goes farther. This will result in an electric potential at B less than electric potential at A. So the change in electric potential as the charge moves farther from the reference plate is a decreasing change in electrical potential. Using the change in electric potential let us determine the work done if it is positive or negative. Recall the expression for work with change in electric potential which is again equation 4. Since the change in electric potential is negative then work done is positive. Here we have a sample problem. Two large parallel metal plates are 5 cm apart. The magnitude of the electric field between them is 800 newtons per coulomb. Letter A, what is the potential difference between the plates? Letter B, what work is done when one electron is moved from the positive to the negative plate? First we draw the problem and determine the given physical quantities and assumed conditions. Here we have the distance between plates which is the change in Y which is YB minus Yat. We also have the magnitude of the electric field. To determine the potential difference between the plates we use equation 8. Substituting the known values and we get that the change in electric potential or the potential difference is 40 volts. To determine the work done for one electron moved from the positive to the negative plate we use equation for work which is equation 4. Here the negative electron moves from the positive plate to the negative plate. The force between the negative plate and negative electron will be repulsive so as it moves closer it slows down due to repulsive behavior which suggests a decrease in its kinetic energy but an increase in its potential energy. Since work in terms of potential energy is given in equation 5 which is the negative of the change of the electric potential energy. So we expect it to have a negative value. From the change in electric potential we can also predict the sign of the work done using equation 4. As we draw closer to the negative plate the distance Y becomes smaller but since it is a negative charge this suggests that is electric potential becomes less negative so that means that the electric potential at B will be greater than at A. So that means the change in electric potential is positive which if applied to the equation for work it is also expected to have a negative value. So we now use equation 4 and substitute the values obtained earlier and we see that the work is about negative 6.4 to the power of negative 18 joules. We see that the work in moving the negative charge to the negative plate is negative indeed. Here we have another example. A work of 100 joules was done by an electric field on a plus 5 coulomb to accelerate it from plate A to plate B. Letter A, what is the voltage across plate A and plate B? Letter B, if the electric potential at point A is 50 V, what is the electric potential at point B?
First we draw the problem and determine the given physical quantities and assumed conditions. Determine the known and assumed values and we have the work done in moving the charge from A to B and the charge of the particle. To find the voltage across plate A and plate B we use the equation for where we get negative 20 volts. Since the particle is a positive and it is moving towards a negative plate the force here is attractive. This suggests that the particle accelerates thus increasing its kinetic energy but reducing its potential energy. So we see that the change in electric potential is a negative 20 volts. So the electric potential at plate A must be greater than the electric potential at plate B. Here we are asked to determine the electric potential at plate B when the electric potential at point A is 50 volts. We know earlier that plate A will have a higher electric potential than plate B so that means the electric potential at B must be less than 50 volts. We calculate it using the equation and we get that the electric potential at B is 30 volts. This satisfies the condition for change in electric potential that the difference will result in minus 20 volts and that electric potential at B is less than the electric potential at A. Here we have a 1.5 volt battery and a light bulb which are in a circuit together. The negative terminal of the battery is the 0 volt at point D and the positive terminal of the battery has an electric potential of 1.5 volts at point A. The battery's electric potential pumps the charges to move from the low voltage at point D to high voltage at point A creating an electric potential difference or delta V. When the battery is connected with a light bulb at points B for the positive end and C for the negative end, the charges will be pushed through the bulb converting the electric potential to light and heat energy. Over time the light begins to dim and loses its luminescence and this is because of the decrease of the electric potential. The total voltage decreases as the charge moves from the positive terminal back to the negative terminal at zero volts. The work done per unit charge of the electric force when a charged body moves from point A to point B is equal to the electric potential at point A minus the electric potential at point B. Let us examine the electric potential due to a single charge. Here we have a charge Q producing an electric field and it is going radially outward. The electric potential energy at position R with a test charge Q0 is given by equation 10. Substituting this to the equation for the electric potential due to a single charge we get an expression for electric potential due to this charge as shown in equation 11. Since electric potential is a scalar quantity, at any point R the value of the electric potential will be the same as shown by equation 11. So at any point on the dashed circle with radius RA it will have an electric potential VA. As the distance RB increases it creates another surface having a different electric potential denoted as VB. These surfaces are called equipotential surfaces or lines and they are perpendicular to the electric field. Here we have another sample problem. What is the work done in moving a 500 microcoulomb charge between two points on an equipotential surface? For equipotential surfaces the electric potential is the same so if we have an electric potential at A then the electric potential at point B is given as equal value. So the change in electric potential is zero as shown here. So the work done in moving a 500 microcoulomb charge between two points on an equipotential surface is equal to zero. For multiple charges the electric potential takes into consideration the electric potential energy for the individual charges as shown here and we use equation 12 that describes that. 
substituting equation 12 to the general equation for electric potential we get the function that describes electric potential for multiple charges as shown in equation 13. Sample problem. Two equal positive point charges of magnitude plus 5 microcoulomb are on the x-axis. One is at the origin and the other at x equals 8 cm as shown in the figure below. Find the electric potential at a point P1 on the x-axis at x equals 4 cm and b point P2 on the y-axis at y equals 6 cm. Letter A. First we solve for the electric potential at point 1 as shown on the figure. We see that all the quantities are just on the x-axis. To solve for the total electric voltage we just sum the charges algebraically which means we ignore the direction since electric potential is a scalar quantity. So we write the formula and manipulate it and take into consideration the value and unit of the constants. One strategy to determine if you have arrived at a correct solution is by examining the units. For this case we see that the units will cancel some of them and end up with the joules per coulomb and we know that this value will lead to the unit volts. This is called dimensional analysis. So here we see that the value for the electric potential when two like charges are equidistant from the point one is equal to 4.95 times 10 to the power of 6 volts. Letter B. Next we solve for the electric potential at point 2 as shown on the figure. We see that they are different distances. So we use the same equation to obtain the total electric potential as shown by equation 13. So we substitute and manipulate the equation and we get that the total voltage is shown here. This is again confirmed by its units using dimensional analysis. We recall that charges can have different shapes and forms and to deal with these types of shapes having continuous charge distribution we use integral functions. Here we have a charged bent wire where we take a small representative of the charged wire dq. The electric potential is then expressed as an integral function to accommodate the shape of the wire and it is given as equation 14. For charged wires dq is given as a function of the linear charge density as shown in equation 15. So for the electric potential for wires it is expressed as an integral function as shown in equation 16. For continuous surface charge distribution where we take a small representative of the charged wire dq which is expressed as a surface charge density which is shown in equation 17. Then the electric potential for a charged surface is then expressed in equation 18. For a continuous volume charge distribution we use a dq that is a function of volume charge density shown by equation 19. The electric potential for a volume charge distribution is then given as equation 20. For charges positioned at large distances the electric potential decreases and if it is far enough such as in infinity the electric potential becomes zero as shown by equation 14 where R is equal to zero. Here we have a sample problem. Electric charge Q is distributed uniformly around a thin ring of radius. Find the potential at a point on the ring axis at a distance from the center of the ring. So we take a small representative of the charge ring and call it dq which produces an electric field. Since the ring is symmetric then each point in the ring is of equal distance towards p. In other words the length r does not vary as we evaluate the ring. To calculate the electric potential we use the function 14. 
substituting the known values we get that the total electric potential at point P is equal to the function here where we simply integrate dQ which is just the total charge of the ring equal to Q. Sample problem. A disk of radius R has a uniform charge density sigma with units of coulomb meter squared. Find the electric potential at point P on the axis passing through the center of the disk. We can see from the figure. Some of the parameters are seen and calculated here like the length D. We imagine that we take small circles with a charge of DQ. The surface charge density of sigma sigma as function of charge and area of the circle in equation 17. Rewriting it for dq we have equation A. Now recall the equation for the electric potential and substitute equation A and the length d function to equation 14. The function is evaluated from 0 to the radius r which is the total radius of the disk. Here we need to do some integration. So we integrate functions. After doing some integration we arrive at the solution of the integral shown in equation C. We then substitute equation C back to equation B. After substituting back we arrive at the solution for the electric potential due to a disk at point P as shown in equation D. Here we have a sample problem. A positive electric charge Q is distributed uniformly along a line of length 2A lying along the axis between Y equals negative A and Y equals positive A as shown in the figure. Find the electric potential at point P on the X axis at a distance X from the origin. Here we take a small segment dq of the rod and determine the electric potential at point P by the segment. We see that the distance r is just the Pythagorean equation and we notice that as we evaluate the charged rod the distance r changes. Examining the equation for r, we see that the distance x along the horizontal remains and only the y distance changes. So we define the small segment charge dq. We write an expression for it as shown here in equation 15. For charged wires dq is given as a function of the linear charge density wavelength so we write it as equation A. Here the linear charge density is just the total charge over the total length of the wire which is twice of A substituting this to the general expression for electric potential shown in equation 14 we get an expression for the voltage for the system as shown here I equation B. Here we have to use mathematical identities to solve for this integral function. So we isolate the integral function of equation B we let y as a function of tangent theta and this in turn turns dy to a function of x times the squared secant theta. So we continue to manipulate the function further and we arrive to much simplified function of the integral as function of secant as shown in equation C. The integral of a secant of theta can be expressed as one of its trigonometric identities as shown by equation D. We then manipulate the equation and arrive at the function D which we will evaluate from A to negative A. We evaluate the function D and get an expression of the difference of log functions and we simplify it as equation A. We then substitute this back to the equation for the electric potential in equation B. So the expression for the electric potential for a straight rod with varying length R is shown in equation F. Here we find the relationship between electric field and electric potential. 
Recall the expression for electric field as shown in equation 21. Note that the electric field is a vector quantity. Comparing this to the electric potential as shown in equation 11, we see that they are identical except for the inverse ratio of the distance r. We also note that the electric potential has no direction since it is a scalar quantity. To write an expression that combines a vector quantity electric field and the scalar quantity electric potential, we introduce the concept of gradient function which is just a derivative with a direction parameter. We can write the gradient for different coordinate systems but for this part we introduce the gradient function for spherical coordinates as shown in equation 22. We also have the gradient function for the Cartesian coordinate system as shown in equation 23. The Cartesian coordinate system describes a function of x, y, z parameters to describe a three-dimensional space such as the figure on the left where we can describe point P as a function of these parameters or P, x, y, and z. Spherical coordinate does the same thing of describing something in three-dimensional space but using the parameters r, theta, and phi where the same point is written as function of these parameters or P, r, theta, and phi. R is the radial of the sphere space, theta, or azimuthal and phi or polar are angles. Some problems are easier solved using a spherical coordinate system than a Cartesian coordinate system. You will learn more about spherical coordinates and other systems in your math courses. Now using the gradient function in spherical coordinates for a point charge system we relate the electric field and electric potential using equation 24. We see that the electric field is equal to the negative of the gradient of electric potential. Substituting the value of the electric potential and taking its derivative we eventually arrive at the expression for the electric field which is exactly the same as the established formulation for electric field shown in equation 21. Note that when we derived using the spherical coordinate system only the R parameter is not zero while the theta and phi terms result in zero since the electric potential is only a function of R. Here we have a sample problem. We are given an electric potential V and we are asked to find the electric field E. To solve for the electric field we use equation 24. Since we are given an electric potential V which is in the Cartesian coordinate system, it would be easier to solve this using the gradient function in the same system. So we let the gradient in Cartesian to operate on the electric potential. After factoring out the constants which are the sigma and the epsilon naught we see that the Z parameter would be the only that will not terminate to zero. So the electric field vector from the scalar electric potential is given in equation A. If we draw the problem for the electric potential it would look like the figure here. We see that the material lies on the x and y axis and it is at an elevation z along the z axis. The electric field based on the solution in equation A tells us the vector electric field is pointed downwards away from the surface. Since it is pointing away from the plane then the plane must be positively charged. Now we do the reverse where we are given an electric field and determine the electric potential. We recall that the electric field can be obtained using the gradient of the electric potential as shown in equation 24. So, to get the reverse of this to obtain the electric potential from the electric field we use an integral function as shown in equation 25. Shown in the figure are two equipotential surfaces having electric potential at point A and point B. To determine the change in electric potential from point A to point B using the electric field we use equation 25. The derivative of radius here is the path from point A to point B which is just the radial length and direction. 
we recall the equation for the electric field for electric field as shown in equation 21. The equation for electric field is then substituted to the integral function and we see that the direction of the electric potential is the same as the path R. So we factor out some constants and we are left with a factor of ratio of length R that can be integrated. Which we evaluate from radial length R A and R B. So this shows that we can obtain the electric potential from the electric field as shown in equation 26. Examining the change in electric potential if it is increasing or decreasing. We look at equation 26 and see that the factor that dictates if it is increasing or decreasing is the difference of the ratio of distances. We see that the difference of the ratio will give a negative value. Which says that as we move farther from the stationary charge its electrical potential decreases. So that means the change in electric potential is negative. Sample problem. An electron is moving along an electric field. If the initial kinetic energy for the motion is greater than zero, describe the change in kinetic energy, the change in electric potential energy, the change in electric potential, and the work done. First we draw the problem, we see that the electron is moving in the same direction as the electric field. This suggests that the electric force will be pointed towards the opposite attracted towards the positive end source of the electric field. For this case it suggests that the electron would slow down due to resistance coming from the force that is directed against the direction of the particle. So that means that the final kinetic energy will be less than the initial then the change in kinetic energy will be less than zero and it is decreasing. For the change in potential energy we consider the conservation of energy which shows that the sum of kinetic energies and potential energies is equal to zero as shown in equation A. Since the change in kinetic energy is decreasing then that means the change in potential energy is greater than zero suggesting that in increasing behavior as the negative charge draws closer. For the change in electric potential, the electric potential of this charge is moving from high to low potential which is from the positive end to the negative end. However, we have to consider that the charge is a negative one so that means as it draws closer to the negative end it becomes less negative according to the formula of electric potential shown in equation B. So this means that the final electric potential is greater than the initial electric potential. Which means that the change in electric potential is positive and it is increasing. For the work done in moving the charge, we recall the equation of work which is shown in equation 4. Since we have established earlier that the change in electric potential is positive then the work from the relation shown in equation 4 must then be negative. We can also use the dot product equation as shown here. We see that the force and displacement are in opposite directions, then the angle between them is 180 degrees which results in a negative value. So again it shows that the work done in moving the negative particle electron is negative. That is it for now and I hope you learned something new today. For questions and comments you may send them to diyeslearningstuff at gmail.com. You may review the slide on YouTube at diyes at diyeslearningstuff. Note, please do not forget to use your school email. Also write your complete name and class section. Thank you for listening and see you next module.